Oliver, Barclays share price is up 7% at the last look, and it looks as though they've had some pretty good results today. These, of course, are largely of Bob Diamond's doing and his team. Um, quite interesting that you've got a different mix of people presenting them today, some old faces, some new. Give me a flavour of the, the numbers. Well, the numbers beat analyst expectations. That's why the shares are up quite sharply today. Um, the main area where that happened was in the investment bank, what used to be called Barclays Capital until the name changed a month or two ago. The much demonised investment bank. The much demonised investment bank, yes, indeed. There it's the fixed income side of the business um, that's done quite well. That's the core part of the business. It's always been Barclays strength and it's really done, done the, the job for them in the first half. So there the fixed and income. Less on the equity side? Yes, less, less good on the equity side, very tough equity markets um, in the first half. So the equities business didn't quite do so well. Um, but there was also decent uh, news on the retail side of the business, the UK retail banks and Barclay Card. Their performance was driven not so much by income as it was an investment bank, but more by a fall in impairment charges. Okay, which we saw a little bit at, um, at Lloyd's as well yesterday. So it looks yeah. though UK banking is getting a little bit better. But of course, Lloyd's is a pure retail bank and slightly embarrassingly for Barclays, it trades on a better multiple of about 0.5 times book. Still nothing to write home about. Barclays is still on a lowly 0.4 times. Yeah, the shares uh, the, the, the shares are down very sharply this year, about th well, 35% down in the past year or so. That's partly because all bank share prices are down and partly because, because of the LIBOR scandal, which really, really blew up a couple of weeks ago. So the share is still very cheap. You, one way of looking at it is that you're getting a, a retail bank with an investment bank thrown in for free, which is one way that you can look at the share price. But certainly they're a lot cheaper than, um, than all their competitors. Okay, but at least, uh, as you say, the, fi the fixed income currencies and commodities business is going strongly, which is their strong suit too. But what, and I remember you wrote recently about the new CEO and the challenges facing them, what do you still think that the new CEO, when they eventually do find one, and let's hope it's an outside candidate, um, let's, let's see, what do you think we're going to be looking for? What's that person got? Which well, boxes have got to be ticked? There's an awful lot of boxes have got to be ticked, but um, most of all, I think uh, investors will want to see some sort of restructuring. Now, there's been a lot of calls for a very major restructuring, a separation of the retail bank from the investment bank. I don't think that's very likely. You'd need to raise an awful lot of capital to let the investment bank stand on its own two feet. So the two are likely to stay together. But you're going to see, I think, uh, some more radical reshaping, um, trimming off businesses that are seen as surplus to requirements. So some sort of shrinkage there. But there's going to have to be something. But what was very interesting today is that Marcus Aegis, who's still the chairman, uh, was stressing the commitment to a universal bank, uh, which didn't please some investors, I don't think. Okay, so it looks as though whoever gets this job is going to face something of an Olympian task. Thanks very much, Oliver.